Now, just, uh, but we're not going to go, we'll go through them in just a moment, but uh, on page two of that document, uh, you'll see a table of contents, and I believe there were more urgent proposals submitted this year than any time before. And so what, uh, what SEBA gave the president, or what SEBA gave the president authority to do uh, some years ago when this procedure was adopted was the authority to classify or categorize each of these urgent proposals into either an EP, an NP, or an SP. So what we have to decide, he has made those decisions and that's been indicated in the document as to where the president has classified these or how he's classified them. Uh, to consider today we only have five expedited proposals. Now there were also 11 normal proposals and I have those uh, also listed in the table of contents and those will be referred to subcommittee next year. So before we even start uh, the next year's proposal cycle, we already have 11 normal proposals to be considered by subcommittee next year. So what I want to do now is go through the EPs uh, one by one. As I said, there's only five of them. And we'll start with the first one. If you want to uh, go for the next slide, please. Next one after that. It's EP 2014-1, which was submitted uh, by uh, our Glider Subcommittee Chairman Manfred Exter. And uh, Manfred, is there anything else you'd like to add to this uh, proposal? I just want to say, as we have seen in uh, conjunction with I'm sending it to Yes, that's a very good comment because uh, when the when the discussion began on the, what was ultimately became the British proposal number one, uh, urgent proposal number one, which is EP 2014-5, when that discussion began, it involved many many emails between uh, various members of the, the subcommittees, and then the, those proposals uh, came out of that discussion. And Manfred, n knowing that he had to do something with gliders at the same time, developed this one. So is there any discussion on 2014-1? Um, any objections? There's no objections. Uh, SIVA agrees. Uh, next slide, please. Also from Manfred, uh, having to do with the height measuring device. Manfred, do you have anything to add to that? As it, uh, as it says on, uh, on the introduction, it is the result of uh, complaints and discussions that we had after the uh, glider advance and the glider third championship uh, this year, when there was criticism of the way we were dealing with our high measurement devices. For those who are not familiar with gliders, uh, we use on our championships an electronic device which signals to the chief judge's position whenever the glider enters the top of the box and when it leaves the bottom of the box. And we give penalties for figures that are flown or started above the top of the box because that is an unfair advantage for, the, uh, for that particular pilot. And whenever a figure has not been completed by the time the pilot drops out of the bottom of the box. So, uh, the results of this HMD, the outputs of this HMD, because of the penalty points connected to it, may be decisive for the outcome of a 
World Championship. And therefore, I formulated rules, or I revised the rules that we had in the book in order to make it more credible, to make our judging more credible and to avoid any further complaints or protests in connection with that. Because if that device is really decisive, and it is, then we must control it more tightly. Thank you, Manfred. Are there any questions or any discussion on the proposal? No, any objections? No objections, Siva agrees. Uh, then we move to uh, Russia proposal number two, which is EP 2014-3. That's on page eight of the document. It has to do with selection of judges. And it's a, very, it's a very simple proposal. It's one sentence. In the judging panel at the World or Continental Championships, only two judges may be from the same country, including the chief judge. Uh, also from Manfred, uh, having to do with the height measuring device. Manfred, do you have anything to add to that? As it, uh, as it says on, uh, on the introduction, here's the result of uh, complaints and discussions that we had after the uh, glider advance at the glider World Championship uh, this year when there was criticism of the way we were dealing with our high measurement devices. For those who are not familiar with gliders, uh, we use on our championships an electronic device which signals to the chief judge's position whenever the glider enters the top of the box and when it leaves the bottom of the box. And we give penalties for figures that are flown or started above the top of the box because that is an unfair advantage for, the, uh, for that particular pilot. And whenever a figure <coughs> has not been completed by the time the glider drops out of the bottom of the box. So, uh, the results of this HMD, the outputs of this HMD, because of the penalty points connected to it, may be decisive for the outcome of a world championship. And therefore, I formulated rules, or I revised the rules that we had in the book in order to make it more credible to make our judging more credible and to avoid any further complaints or protests in connection with that. Because if that device is really decisive, and it is, then we must control it more tightly. Thank you, Manfred. Are there any questions or any discussion on the proposal? No, any objections? No objections, Siva agrees. Uh, the Russia proposal number two, which is EP 2014 3, that's on page eight of the document, it has to do with selection of judges. And it's a, very, it's a very simple proposal, it's one sentence. In the judging panel at the World or Continental Championships, only two judges may be from the same country, including the chief judge. Uh, does the delegate of uh, Russia have any addition to this? No. No? Okay. Uh, just a uh, comments and um, proposed amendments. I'm not sure the uh, proposal is self-explanatory in terms of rationale as it's written here. I'm fully aware of the controversies this year. 
I think this proposal originates from after the um, European Advanced Championships, um, where in that case, uh, I think we had on the line one French chief judge and two uh, French judges. Um, in fact, so ju just as a matter of comment, uh, uh, we've also assessed all those FPS results, and by removing one uh, French judge from uh, this panel of judges, we, uh, the, the first four uh, in the ranking would still be the same four French pilots. By removing uh, the two French judges, the first four in the rankings would be the same first four French pilots. So uh, I'm not sure, <coughs> although I'm aware of the, of the risk that is uh, on the line in this proposal, I'm not sure that this is a reflection of any shortcoming of uh, what happened in uh, this year, uh, European advance. And my uh, amendment, uh, the one I would propose, if there is a consensus that there should not be too many judges from one nation, uh, which I can fully understand, then I would submit that the limit should be one judge uh, per uh, country, uh, regardless of the chief judge, because the chief judge simply does not uh, put marks on any sheet. So uh, accepting uh, to have two uh, judge from one nation judging and putting marks, and if you have a chief judge from one nation, then you have only one uh, allowed to put marks from another country, I think would be unfair if you consider that having several judges from one nation judging is unfair, which remains to be proven. I would like to um, just back what has just been said. The um, controversy in Poland I thought was very unfair to the chief judge involved. The, um, as has been said, the chief judge doesn't score. It's very difficult to influence the scores of judges. Um, the only possible place you could is on a conference where the Nate said which wasn't the case, by the way, nothing like that. And um, I, I hear about the uh, whether we're going to go to maybe one judge from each country. That's a separate discussion altogether. But uh, I also say this is, I don't believe this is self-explanatory. I believe it's a direct result of a criticism that came out in Poland, which I think was unfair to that particular chief judge. Thank you. Well, just to uh, uh, to answer Matthew's uh, question, but uh, it, it was not a question of uh, marking the past performance. It was a matter of, uh, well, the chief judge can sometimes influence the conference and uh, make a decision uh, having a custom board make a decision which is not ac actually real goal by some of the judges or sometimes even most of the judges. So if uh, there are, and it's not that there is a two French or two Russian and the Russian uh, chief judge, uh, their proposal was done independently on the nations. So just because the chief judge can include the decision during the conferences and sometimes it's very, um, difficult uh, situations which occur on the changing line.
delegate of Russia want to modify it in any way? Agree to any modification? Uh, well, it, of course, it's been suggested by Matthew that uh, one thing that might be considered here is that there will only be one judge per country on the panel. Well, if, according to what I discussion I heard before, this would be the proposal for the next year plenary. Separate proposal. Now, we have in the rules that only two judges can be uh, on the on, on the general panel. We just kind of clarify it, including the chief judge. We are not making any difference in what we had in the panel concerning the scoring judges. Okay. So there's no change. Uh, then if, if there, is there any further discussion? All right, then I, I think we may have to take a vote on this. EP 2014-3, the proposal from Russia. Who is in favor? In favor, please. Would the secretaries please count? Everybody is ready? Because I see a dance. One, two, Who is in favor? Three, four. Nine. Nine, Nine are in favor. Those who are against? Fourteen. Okay, the proposal is rejected. Next, we move to uh, EP. Next uh, slide, please. 2014-4, entry fees, which is on page 11 of the document. Again, the entry fee uh, agreed at the SEVA meeting must not be increased by organizers of the World or Continental Championships later. Rationale is self-explanatory. Except what does, if we decide what the entry fee will mean, then that's a good question. So, uh, Elena, would you like to add anything? Well, just uh, the SIWA agreed to the entry fee and, uh, in lots of cases when in a year or two years after that we come to the competitions, the entry fee is not what was agreed by SIWA. So why do we need to agree to the entry fee? Um, if the organizer does whatever he, he wants, or the, the body of the organizer body does whatever it wants for the entry fee. So I think uh, we should set the limit. And as yesterday, as you already said, I think we really need to be able to set this limit. And uh, this limit uh, needs to be uh, it needs to be possible to pay this entry fee. Uh, Shorter time in advance to the competition, like uh, a month or a month and a half, not more. Yes. Uh, we have uh, been talking about this quite intensively the last couple of days in the Bureau, and uh, we have made the decision to add some wording in the championship guide and in the preface and that's where we said must be and there we said exactly six weeks ahead you should be able to pay the proposed entry fee of course if there is an organizer that needs then to have contacts with hotels and need to book the rooms and many times they need also to pay in advance to get a good price. So what we have said and we have it all in and decided to have it in the championship guide so I think it's not necessary to do any new rules on this decision in this matter. Thank you. Yes, Vladimir. Elena, can you please mention exact uh, examples of this? Wh when, on which competition this occurred in past few years? You want me to go how far past it? I don't know, three years at least. Well, let's say in uh, this year, the World Championship, the, the agreed, uh, first of all, the agreed amount was for, uh, for the, the whole story was 
receiver agrees to different location, different uh, entry fee, different uh, uh, agreement with, with the organizer. When the entry fee for this competition was set, uh, and we um, complained that it was too high and the CEO didn't accept it from the first time, it was promised that, okay, this level of entry fee, but we will uh, uh, provide the transportation uh, <coughs> as it was in 2003 for free to each team. It wasn't done. Uh, the entry fee was much higher than it was agreed. The entry fees for other competitions was like, the, there was set entry fee, but then there was a schedule and it was an increment of a great entry fee. Not that you can pay less if you pay in advance. It was, okay, you have to pay this amount somewhere in January or March, and then it, 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 it would be increased 15, 25%. It's what I'm talking about. So if we agree with that it's 1,800 1, euros per pilot, it should be the maximum. And if the organizer wants money in advance, make it cheaper for us to pay in advance, or ask for a deposit, let's say, a part of the entry fee, because I don't think the organizer needs the whole amount of the entry fee to pay for uh, hotel booking and so on and so on. And then if a pilot pays in January and then in July, uh, decides that he cannot participate in September, he can't get the entry fee at all back. Because the schedule is already, no, no, no uh, return, no reimbursement if you uh, decide not to participate two months in advance for the competition. That's not fair. And in lots of countries, well, okay, I know that for some people that's not the problem. I, I, we heard the, uh, when uh, some uh, pilots say, well, if I already spend 50,000 for my preparation, it doesn't matter if I pay 2,000 2, or 2,500. For us, it matters. We are sending the team, we want to send a big team. It goes for, it's good for the organizer to have a big team also. But we are struggling with sponsors all the time. And they are not willing to give you money in, in January. <coughs> and then it, it just, it, 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 it's getting on and on. So I, I think that if the CEO makes some decision, it needs to follow this decision and see if they, they are uh, followed by the organizer also. Thank you. Yes. Um, we have to know by advance, uh, of course, what will be the cost of the entry fees. And uh, so, even for a house, for example, you have an estimate, and you can rise it up a little bit, maybe 5%. Uh, for the contest, maybe the fuel will uh, rise or something like that. So we can understand that uh, the, the price is not exactly the same. But maybe we can fix uh, some uh, percentage. Uh, but if the price is not the same, uh, the organization has to say why, because of the fuel or I don't know, something else. Maybe. Well, I think every time when the uh, entry fee is set by the organizer, they are already putting this percentage of increase, possible increase for the next year, prices. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, otherwise, it, it, well, just every time when you're planning some expense, you put some percentage to the I was not asking to be against you. It was just... No, it was just supporting you. Did, did, did I answer the question? I couldn't have you talk about this. Well, uh, I don't know where we go with this because, uh, as LG has said, uh, this will be addressed in the contest handbook. Uh, but yet, uh, that does not have the authority of rules. It's it's a guideline or a handbook. Uh, just to let me let me just back up a little bit. I pulled uh, up the bulletin 
from the World Championships this year. Mm -hmm. And just to familiarize you with the entry fees that, that were, were, uh, were asked for there, if the entry was uh, submitted before 30 March, the single entry fee was $2,500. Before 30th of June, 3000 And then the last uh, deadline for entry fees was the 31st of August. And then it went to 3500 This was to give uh, incentive, for, of course, for early payment uh, because the organizer in Texas had uh, many financial commitments to make. I remember they wrote on one occasion, I think it was in uh, after that first deadline, uh, sometime in May or June, they had to write a $40,000 check to the uh, Tanglewood Resort. And uh, so $40,000 in one, one check. So uh, that's why the, the entry fees were structured like they were. It was something that was an incentive to pay early. Let me just add on behalf of the organizers, Friends because they were the first to pay and they paid in December. And I think the US team came in after that. So they were very early and we got the money and that was put to good use right away. So anyway, that gave us some immediate seed money to work. So how do we resolve this? President. If we want to put it in the rules, I think it's also important if we look on the history. What will happen if the organizer raises the bid even though, as in USA, they had an early bid, that bid that was accepted for $2,500, and then by the end of August, it was $1,000 more expensive. Um, we need, first of all, to set that six weeks ahead you should pay the entry fee. But what would happen if the organizer now raises it? There need also to be some sort of a sanction. Uh, what, how can, what could we do with the organizer if they still keep on? This is the problem we have. Well, I think the best way out of this uh, is to require in our bidding, uh, in our guidelines for bidding for championships, which is a SEBA document that's on the website, that that, uh, that document require uh, that uh, what the entry fees will be and if the organizers, pref uh, if they propose a graduated fee that uh, increases as it gets closer to the competition, that that be specified in the bid. I think that should be required. So if SIVA will agree to that, then we can get it in that document, but with a clear understanding that entry fees, it does say in section six now, I believe, that entry fees must be agreed by SIVA between the organizers and SIVA. So if somebody, if an organizer comes along and unilaterally uh, increases the fee, then that's in violation of Section 6. But if there is going to be various fees for different things, I mean, there, if you look at the bulletin from the WAC, there were several, a total of, uh, well, let me see here, there was a total of six, twelve different fees. Twelve. And uh, so anyway, I think that should be in the original bid. That's my feeling. Okay? Any objections? Okay, Siva agrees. And then we have one more. Next slide, please. This is from the, uh, the UK. Uh, also, uh, judging criteria for flip rolls, that can be found on page 11 of your document. Are there any uh, comments by the UK delegate on this? Or the judging subcommittee chairman? And I simply to say that uh, since we've already approved the gliding version of this, which has just a few words changed from the original power version, um, if we have uh, approved that, then this is really almost identical. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you.
you. Uh, in, in fact, uh, I, I've waited for the discussion on power because I'm not knowledgeable at all on gliders. I recognize that this is more or less the same wording, but I wanted to intervene on, on this one. Uh, I have two comments. Uh, this has been discussed at length uh, uh, through some uh, emails in, uh, in the summer. First of all, uh, before I give my comments, I I fully support the idea to, uh, to improve our uh, wording on these uh, flick rolls uh, criteria. So I, I really applaud what, what has been done. And I have two comments though. One is for the judges uh, who have the a, a sharp eye better than I have. I'm not a judge. Uh, it, it clearly says here that the pilot will get a PZ if the judge does not see the yaw at initiation of a flick. Again, I don't have the sharp eye, but I think it is extremely difficult to see yaw on all the flicks at initiation, and I would like a reaction from some, uh, some judges. Matthew, can you say which paragraph this is in? Yeah, it's, it's in 6927.2. <coughs> well, it, it, it's in fact, on the, it's uh, everywhere, but it's where it says if both the required pitch change, and this, there's no question about it, you should <coughs> see the pitch change, and your are not clearly seen, the figure must be given a PZ. Again, pitch, no question about it. Your are really challenged anyone to see yo on many fleets at the initiation. What what people can see very clearly is when the flick is initiated, is it a flick or not? You can see that from the conical motion that is explained as well in the criteria. But at initiation to see yo, there are a number of cases where there is no way to see it. Uh, or at least that's that's my view and this is why I request a, a feedback from the judges. Support my point. I, I miss. Uh, I didn't see this problem before when I read it. Uh, but when uh, he wrote, um, put it in, in words, yes, I think I agree because uh, the initiation, the outer rotation with the rudder actually does not clearly show the yo. The, if the snap is nice and clean, it would be just the change of. Uh, angles of attack, the change of uh, flow to uh, two parts of the wings and start their outer rotation without really showing that the nose of the airplane goes anywhere. And actually what we try to do to stay on heading is not to really go with your too much. With the first movement of rudder, it will go around the axis with with the radios, but not with really with clear showing the uh, on the initiation. Um, yes. I'll let, I'm going to speak. Uh, well, let me pass back to Alan because Alan one of the one of the uh, driving people in this discussion. Let me let me come back to Alan first. Matthew, would it satisfy your concern if we change the word your in the penultimate line on page 11 to auto rotation? So that if, however, it would read, however, if both the required pitch change and auto rotation are not clearly seen, then the figure must be given a PZ. Yeah. Well, we just change that one word from your to auto rotation in that one place, that's enough. I think, I think we would agree with that. Okay, thank you. I'm absolutely fine with it. But I, think I had a second comment, which is on the next page. Um, and by the way, on, on the next page, 6927.3, you also have the aircraft must be seen to your, so I, I assume this will be changed uh, accordingly. Must be seen to auto rotate, something like that. Uh, my comment is about the last um, 
uh, one of the last sentences in this paragraph, which is very important as it is something new, uh, I believe linked to the fact that it has been observed by the, the judges that not enough that are rewarded for, for flicks, for bad flicks. I read it. While the competitor should be given the benefit of some doubt, if the judge considers on balance, you, you recognize this is British wording, it's very subtle, on balance that a proper flick has not been initiated, then he must give a pizza. Uh, here, where I'm a, a little bit uncomfortable is that we would put in the criteria something specific for flicks that in fact is applicable everywhere. Um, I personally, I would be more comfortable with a, a sentence, a, a more simple sentence just like that. If the judge considers that a proper flick has not been initiated, then he must give up his head. And, and uh, the, the story about the benefit of some doubt, etc. I, I remember all those discussions, but I'm not fully comfortable with seeing that here specifically. Yeah, simplify the sentence. <laughs> Matthew, what was, paragraph was that? It was, sorry, page 12, 6, 9, 27, 3, page 12. It was quite a Uh, yes, um, the, the two words on the balance was meant to indicate that, that the judge should uh, consider in his or her mind one way or the other whether a, a flick roll has been started, and yes, it's an English phrase. Um, if on balance is removed, then if the judge considers that a proper flick has not been initiated, he must give a PZ, the, the, the meaning is the same. Yeah, but uh, I think Macy means also that we need to uh, delete the whole first part of the sentence. Yes. Yes. So just if the judge if, if the judge considers that the proper flick has not been initiated, then it's a PZ. Because well, it's already in the rules so that if the pilot has the benefit of doubt, and it it stays here from the okay. first version of, of the. Okay, yes, the, the one other competitor should be given the benefit of some doubt. It okay. is is it exists in the rules anyway. So. Yes, a simplification would be to remove those words and say, if the judge considers that a proper flick has not been initiated, then he must give a PZ. Yes. Um, if, if I go back, uh, I'm sorry to be so detailed, but if I go back to the beginning, um, it says, at the start of a positive flick, um, and now I, 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 two sentences down, either shortly after or simultaneous with the pitch change, um, so this is uh, this is talking about your long discussion.
we should remove from the, the rules, from the criteria that to achieve auto rotation, the aircraft must go. The, 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 uh, the reaction is just that you would not necessarily see it. You would observe that, it, that it, there was a yaw by the effect of that yaw and not the yaw itself. So that's, that's point one. But then, uh, coming back to the previous uh, discussion, I, I'm not sure I could see the relation between this thing about the benefits of doubt and so on and, and this new discussion. I, 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 to be clear, I propose to amend uh, this, uh, this uh, the sentence by saying if the judge considers that the property has not been initiated is in that okay? Ah, uh, okay.